Let me start the recording. Oh, that's a little bit too big. There we go. That's better. All right. So if the line segments are congruent is A, because it says A is here, and line segments have the same length, that's B. Then I've got they are congruent, right? Those match. And then I've got if and only if, if and only if. That's got two ifs in it. So I need two arrows. So you're going to do that. And then they have the same length. They have the same length as B. So we're going to do A arrow arrow B. If and only if is that biconditional. I have to be able to read it forwards and backwards. And then the line segments have different lengths. Different instead of the same but it's still talking about lengths. Oops, I got my color coding backwards. So the length is the pink, but I want different. So this is not B. And then therefore they are not congruent, not congruent. So therefore has three E's in it. So you need three dots, one, two, three. That's the symbol for therefore. And then not congruent, not A, right? Those symbol questions should be super easy, hopefully. You just got to remember what all the symbols are. What is the relationship between the side length of a regular hexagon and the length of the ratio of the circle inside blah, blah, blah? Oh, my gosh. That sounds just like something I don't want to do. Probably everybody did that. If I was taking this test, I would do that. So let's just write down everything we know. What is the relationship between the side length of a regular hexagon? Okay, so I know I need a regular hexagon. That means it's six sides and all the sides are the same. So regular means they're all the same and hexagon means I have six. And the length of the radius of a circle in which it is inscribed. So inscribed sounds like the hexagon is inside the circle. So if I draw a circle around that hexagon and it touches at all of those corners, that's what inscribed means. So on yours, you might wanna make note of what inscribed means, right? Inscribed means that it's inside and touching all the corners. So then I wanna know something about the radius. And I suppose, I mean, it kind of looks like there's some lines of symmetry here. So I could do all of that. These are all going to be congruent, right? So if all the purple sides of the hexagon are congruent and all the pink radii of the circle are congruent, what kind of triangle do I have with two pink sides and one blue side if they're all congruent? Is that an equilateral triangle? So what's the relationship between the blue hexagon and the pink circle? Did somebody say equal to themselves and just weren't brave enough to say it out loud? I bet you did. They're equal. So this question really it's super complicated because there's no picture, but if they gave you this picture, it would turn into an easy question because they're all the same. If I put a, a hexagon inside of a circle, I end up with six equilateral triangles, all the same. Wait, what is inscribed? Inscribed means it's inside. I shouldn't have that S there. So if I have a triangle inside of a circle, it would look like that. 
if I had a square inside of a circle inscribed in a circle, the square would be inside of the circle. Thank you. So, yep. Mm -hmm. I love it when people interrupt me. Stop. Ask me questions. Okay. Does that kind of make sense? Like if you're not sure about a question, you just draw out everything you know and then make your best guess. All right. Start off with a hard one. This one should be pretty easy though. How do we figure out smallest to largest angle? So you got to read all of those words and figure out that it wants smallest to largest. So if C is opposite the smallest side, C is the smallest angle, and then A is opposite the medium side, so that's the medium angle. And then B is opposite that large side, so that's the large angle. I don't know what those angles are, I just know that C is the smallest, A is the medium, and B is the large because opposite sides and opposite angles have the same general relationship to each other. Hopefully everybody chose my cool Joe smiley face. All right, on to slide five. Two lengths of a triangle are 30 inches and 50 inches. And I'll wrap myself out here. I made a crazy mistake on this question when I was doing my arithmetic. So I went to the first slide and I was like, hey, wait, that's not what I got. What do I do with the 30 and the 50? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide them. Um, you could subtract and then you can add. Absolutely. Oh, and this was the problem that I did. I made a 20 instead of a 30. So 50 minus 30 is 20, right? This part, the smallest it could be is 20 if I made an acute triangle. And then I could add them and do 50 plus 30. That's going to give me 50 plus 30. That means to close that triangle, I need an 80 if I make an obtuse triangle. So I want all my numbers between 20 and 80. Everything between 20 and 80. But not including them. Notice that these are less than signs. So it can't be 20 and it can't be 80. Hopefully those have become really easy questions too. I can't even tell you how excited I was to see your work on this question, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody was marking. They put T as 41. They put R as 33. They put P as 10X plus six. Me and my crazy self, I didn't look at this congruency statement and I made an equation and solved for X and I found that X equaled 10. And then I looked and was like, oh, but they're not asking me X. So if I look at the T, the T goes with the Q. So T and Q are the same. And R and S are the same. So that, my friends, is your answer. Sometimes you'll work yourself into a hard problem when it really is easy. So you can 100% solve for X. Unfortunately, that's just not what it's asking you for. And I fell into that trap when I was doing the answer key. Any questions on why it's 33? This key right here is super, super, super important. Always look for those. Okay, okay, okay. So this, my friends, is a right triangle problem. So what do I need to remember about right triangles? First thing is Pythagorean theorem. Oops, I don't know what I did. Bear with me. I've lost my picture. There we go, she's back. So we need to remember Pythagorean theorem. 
a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And the other thing we need to remember is brand new this year. So, Pa and Toa. So, which one do I use to find an angle? Pythagorean theorem or Sokotoa? The second one. The second one, absolutely. So, I need to label opposite, hypotenuse, and adjacent. Remember, if I'm standing on the X, I'm standing on the angle, that is the opposite. The hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. And then the adjacent is the other one. So I don't have an A. I love that some that Michael put um, sign in the chat. So I am going to use the O and the H. So I need to use sine of my angle, but I don't have an angle. So I'm going to put a negative one to remind myself. And then I'm going to multiply. O over H because O goes over H. So 6 over 12. What mode does our calculator have to be in? Degree or radian? Degree. So you're going to go to your Desmo, open that up, and you're going to do inverse sine and then 6 divided by 12. Do you get 30 degrees? So we just put this in the calculator. Sine negative one, the angle always goes next to sine, cosine, or tangent because we don't have an angle. We've got to put that negative one in there to hold it. Okay, questions on that guys? We're almost done. Two more questions. All right, question number eight. I've got a rectangle. So what's the very first thing you think about when you have a rectangle? What do you know about every rectangle you've ever met? All of the corners are? 90 degrees. 90 degrees, absolutely. And all the sides are congruent. So whenever I get a question about rectangles, I automatically start marking stuff. I also know that the diagonals are always congruent. I might not need all this information, but I always start there. So then I'm going to start putting in my stuff. M, O, N. So if I start at M and I go to O and then I go up to N, that angle is 62 degrees. I know these sides are parallel as well, right? So I can make my Z. Boom, boom, boom. So this is 62 degrees. And if these diagonals are the same, doesn't that make it an isosceles triangle? So that's 62 degrees and that's 62 degrees. You guys with me so far? All rectangles are divided into four isosceles triangles, right? So then I've got these right angles here. So the, the little tiny acute angle and the bigger acute angle should equal 90 degrees. So 90 minus 62 is how many degrees? It's 90 minus 62. Anybody get 28? 28. And if all of those are the same, I can label all of those, 28 and 28, right? And then I've got this triangle. So this triangle here, can I find this angle R? How can I find angle R? I've got 28, 28, and a missing angle. 28, 28, and R. What should all of those add up to be? Somebody say 180? 180. Yeah, so what's 180 minus 28 minus 28 more? That's going to give me angle R. 124. 124. Awesome. 
And then because these obtuse angles are vertical, that's 124 and 124. Now that we've marked all that stuff, let's see what they're actually asking me for. So if I go O, M, N, O to M to N, oh, that's my 28. And then P to R to O, P to R to O, oh, that's my 124. That was hard. There was a lot to do in that problem. I'm going to give you a minute to either screenshot that or jot it down. Make sure you know how we got the 28 and the 124. You've got to know that the sides are congruent. You've got to know that the sides are parallel. You've got to know that the diagonals are congruent. And if you've got congruent diagonals, you have isosceles trapezoids or isosceles triangles. And all triangles add up to 180 degrees. This one question has like 10 different things you need to know in it. It's tough. We ready to go to the last question? Okay. Have I put everybody back to sleep? It's okay to be truthful. Although I guess if you're asleep, you can't tell me. <laughs> Arc length. What's the formula we need to remember for arc length? It's something over 360 times something else. It's the angle and then um, the circumference. Absolutely. So the tricky part of this one is they want the angle or the arc of JML. So if I go from J all the way around to M and then continue on to L. Is that a hundred or is that something else? If the whole circle is 360 and that little piece is a hundred, what's the red part that I labeled from J to M to L? We do 360 minus 100 equals 260. That's my angle, folks. And this is just another tricky thing that they test makers do to try to mess you up. It's intentional. Be smarter than the test makers. So I really want to put 260 up there instead of 100. And then for circumference, I can put in two pi and the radius is four. Once I substitute into my formula, which of course you have to memorize because it's not on the formula sheet, another mean evil thing to make your lives more difficult. We can just plug all of that into the calculator and what do you get? Something a little bit less than 20. Anybody? I got 18.1. I got 18.1 also. Excellent. Hopefully other people are exercising their calculators too. All right. That is it for that. Um, yes, we are definitely going to do more practice with this subject, I promise. And I am trying to find some quizzes and quizlets or make them. Um, historically, I haven't used them very much. And there are something that I put on my own to-do list. So I want to go back. Um, actually, let's not go back quite yet. Today is Tuesday. So if you go into today's folder, this is what you'll see. There is a homework tonight. So make note of that if we run out of time. I know we've got 50 minutes, but somehow they evaporate. Um, 
Somebody asked me a question yesterday about the Pear Decks. They're like, Miss Doherty, you always close the Pear Decks and I want to be able to go back and look at them. This made me wonder whether you guys know that you have access to all of the takeaways. So when I close a Pear Deck, they go to your Google Drive. And I thought I was sending out emails that told you that. Do you guys get the emails that the Pear Decks have closed and you have access to your stuff in something called takeaways? Um, first I did when it stopped. It stopped. Hmm. So I'm going to show you on my drive where they go. And then I want you guys to try to go into your drive and see where they go. Because this is one of the reasons that I was using Pear Deck so much. Because I like that you get the takeaway from it. So in my drive, and bear with me, I've got a lot of junk in my drive. You should have a folder called Pear Deck. So if you have like, if you don't see your folders like this, and you see like a long string, this is really hard to look at. If you see like a long string of stuff, you can click on the little waffle up here, or you can go down and find the thing that is called Pear Deck. They should be alphabetical. Mine looks a little bit different than yours because I have some teacher folders in there. We'll see if it opens. But you should have a folder called takeaways. And if you go into your takeaways, I think all of your Pear Decks should be there. I have one for every um, Pear Deck I've ever done with all of my classes. So there are a lot of them. But like the SOL review that we did last week should be labeled 12 for SOL warm up number four. I'm starting to get better at naming them. So yours should be here. I have the whole classes. So like if I wanted to click on somebody's and I always do an answer key, so I'll click on my own. This is what it should look like. And it should give you kind of a PDF version or a Google Doc version of maybe what the slide was and what you wrote on it. No, Mars is not showing up. It's not? So you don't see this. So you see this slide, but not the response? That is really good for me to know because the whole reason I was using these Pear Decks so much is because I thought you had this kind of record of your work. Okay, so that's important for me to see. Hmm, I wonder why that is. I'm gonna have to look into that. Um, okay. Uh, where did my, oh, there it is. So I did want to talk about that. Um, let me look into that. Central inscribed angles, page six. We didn't finish the central and inscribed angles. So I wanted to talk about that. And then I wanted to open up IXL together and answer any questions you had there. And then talk about the media album homework that um, was supposed to be done yesterday. And I know I didn't have any time at all to explain that. So I'm not surprised that only four people did it. But I'm so impressed with the four or five people that did do it. So happy with that. And then we do need to talk about circle segments for a minute. There are four different kinds of new problems involving circle segments. Okay. So that's kind of our plan for today. We're going to spend a couple minutes on central and inscribe. We'll spend about 20 minutes on IXL, a few minutes on the homework. So you know what to do. I'm going to make that do Friday. And then, and it'll probably be extra credit for your test is what I'm going to use this for, this media album stuff. And then we'll talk about circle segments. Okay, questions on any of that? All right, if I get off topic, let me know. And if I go too fast, let me know. Because when I have a to-do list that this is this long, sometimes I go way too fast. So I'm gonna go into Friday's work. And I think, actually, I already have it open up here. So let me make sure that this is really it. And I'll put the Pear Deck link in the chat. Oh, I don't know that this is the one we wanted. 
I don't think that is the one we wanted. All right. So central and inscribed angles. This is your Pear Deck link. Maybe it'll open. And correct me if we're I'm wrong, but I think we got all the way through slide five. So remember a central angle is one that touches the center. An inscribed angle is one that touches the edge. And their relationship is the inscribed angle is small and the central angle is twice as big. So we can generalize that to X and 2X. And then the arc opposite that central angle is exactly the same. So we've got small, big, and big. X, 2X, 2X. That's kind of the pattern. All of the arcs around the edge of a circle are going to add up to 360. So we did these. And then we talked about a whole bunch and we jumped back and forth. This page of notes needs to be revamped. It's not very organized. But central and inscribed. So the inscribed is half the size of the arc small and large, so 78 divided by 2. If we have a um, semicircle, then it's still half of the 180. So these turn into right angles, right? And then we've got some that if I've got one flashlight flashing on one part of the arc and another flashlight flashing on the exact same part of the arc, that means the green angle and the blue angle are exactly the same, right? So we practice those. I think that's where we were practicing. So let me zoom in so we can see. And I know there's not a lot of space to write on here. But if I have an angle at the edge, that means this is going to be X. And this big arc out here is going to be twice as big. Right? If that whole circle is 360, how can I find this outer arc? I can do 360 minus 65 minus 53. So I do the whole circle minus the 65 degree part minus this 53 degree part. Open up your calculator and do 360 minus 65 minus 53. And what do you get? 200 and what? Anybody get 240? I got 242. I got 242 as well. And it's asking us JKL. So we want this angle inside. If I remember the angle is smaller, right? And the arc is bigger. I now have to divide this by two. So 242 divided by two is 121. The angle is 121 degrees and the arc is 242 degrees. So one, uh-huh. Why did we divide by two? Um, because that's the relationship, and I hate to say it like that, but that's just the relationship that there is, is something you need to memorize. So you just need to remember that the arc is um, bigger than the angle. So the angle is half the size of that arc when the vertex is on the edge. I wish I had a better reason. It's just because that's the way it is. I used to have hate saying that to my kids when they were little. Um, in the next one, I always look at what I have to see what I can find. So I always look at the picture first if I can. I know RS is 64 and I know SU is 139. And I know UT is 75. So can I find RT? What should all four of those arcs add up to be? 360. 360, absolutely. So in my calculator, if I do 360 
minus what I know, minus 64, minus 39, minus 75, you should get 82, question mark. Can somebody check my work and make sure I didn't do anything crazy? Yes, I got it. Awesome. So RST, RST is this angle, right? And we said the angle is smaller. So that's going to be X and that's going to be 2X. So if I know RT is 82 and I want the small angle that goes with it, do I multiply by 2 or divide by 2? If you're thinking divide, you're correct. What's 82 divided by 2? 2? Oh, am I lagging? Did you guys get 41? My internet has been unstable all weekend, so if I start doing crazy things, let me know. So then I've got RUT. R U T. And that goes to that same arc, correct? So this is X and this is 2X. So what's that angle? Also 41. How do we feel about that? We okay with those? Let's see if we can go on to 8 and 10, and then we'll do some practice. So 8 is the same. I still have an angle that touches the edge, right? And my angle is small, and my arc is big. So do I want to multiply the angle by 2, or do I want to divide the arc by 2? I can do either one. So I can do the angle, two times the angle equals the arc. Or I can do the arc divided by two equals the angle, right? So two times the small thing equals the big thing. Or the big thing divided by 2 equals the small thing. Either way works. Does that kind of make sense? Which equation looks easier to solve, the first one or the second one? The first one. I think so, too. So I'm going to solve the first one. But the second one is just works just as easily. 2 times 67 gives me 134. So you want to write this on yours. And then, or on a piece of paper, since we just established that you can't do the paradox, can't see the paradox always. And then if I solve that equation, what did you get for x? x equals. I did 134 minus 58, and then that answer divided by 4. Anybody get an answer? I got 19. Anybody get 19? Yes? Okay. Question number 10, I'm going to zoom in even a little bit more. Yeah. Sorry, my husband just walked in to ask me a question. All right. Let's see what we know about this. Does this look crazy? I've got an arc at 78. So what is angle Y? If my arc is big and my angle is small, what's angle Y?
Do I multiply by 2 or divide by 2? I'm going from the big arc to the small angle. Divide, absolutely. So instead of that x right there, I can do 78 divided by 2, which is 39. Right? I'm just trying to fill in stuff that I know. So if I know this arc is 78, I know this angle is 39. Because the angle is smaller than the arc by half. Okay. Then I see this triangle, x, w, y. What do all the corners of every triangle add up to? All the angles add up to 180. So 180 equals 7x plus 6 plus 114 plus 39. So now I've got to solve that equation. So I add up all of those like terms. 180 equals 7x. And then I'll do 6 plus 114 plus, that's a 39, by the way, folks. Oh, somehow I got a log in there. I don't need that. 6 plus 114 plus 39. Anybody get that faster? 159, and then we're going to solve that. So we subtract 159 from both sides. So 180 minus 159 gives me 21. And what is x equal? Three, 100%. Okay. So if you've got an angle and an arc, and the angle touches the edge of the circle, the angle is half the size of the arc. If you've got two angles that are going to the same arc, then those angles are going to be equal. That's kind of the takeaway here. Okay, so let's look at some practice on that. Let's go to IXL. And I know it's going to take you guys a minute to get there. We can go to U2. Hopefully you've got your screen split so you can do this at the same time that I'm doing it. Right. If I want the measure of PQ, I want to know how far to go from P to Q. So all the way around a circle is 360. So I'm going to do 360 minus 130 minus 150. And that's going to give me 80. All right, so you two start off pretty easy. I want HI, so HI is this part. So again, 360 minus the two things that I know give me 100. Same thing here. I'm assuming it's going to get harder eventually, right? Now I've got central angles. So the central angles are congruent to their arcs. If this angle is 145, then this arc is 145. If this angle is 130, this arc is 130. That means this angle and this arc are going to be congruent. So I can do 360 minus 130 minus 145. It looks different, but it's the exact same math. So 360 minus 145 minus 130 is going to give me this angle here. D, G, E. D, G. That's the angle I want. So that's 85. 
Are you guys good on this one? T S C. So that's again going to be 360. So 360 minus 130 minus 130 gives me 100. Measure of ST. So ST is this one. Again, that's going to be 360. I just have four parts now. So I'm going to do 360 minus 80 minus 100 minus 130. Or I could add all of those up and then subtract. Again, 360. Still 360 because all of these blue lines are radii. They all meet in the center, so it's still just 360. Now I've got some algebra to do, right? But all of these are still going to add up to 360. So 360 equals x plus 56 plus 67 plus 73 plus x plus 74. So if I add all of those up, I just add all of those numbers. and then solve that two-step equation. Hopefully I did it correctly. It's going to be 45. Right? So if these get you stressed out, you can always stop. I think you need to get 500 points is what I asked for all of the U's. So U2 should be a pretty simple one to get um, a pretty high score. Is it still hard to understand me? Am I still lagging out? I might have to go teach from my hat from the school. They'll let me. It shows I've got five bars. Should we go to U11 and look at that? Do you have questions on YouTube? So these are the ones we were just doing. So angle G is going to be twice as big. Right, so this is going to be 102x, 2x, and 2x. You just have to remember that the inscribed angle is small, the central angle is big, and the arc is big. So x, 2x, and 2x. So 55 times 2. Is this helpful? Maybe. E, D, F. So this one does get a little crazy. E, D, F. I want this angle, right? So I can find the central because that adds to 360. 360 minus 128 minus 114. 360 minus 128 minus 114 gives me 118. G equals 118, right? And that's the big part. 
This is 2x and this is x. So if I'm going from big to small, you want to divide by 2. So 118 divided by 2. So this angle is going to be 59. Does that make sense, guys? I'm trying to write instead of talk, since you're telling me I'm lagging. I'm looking at the chat. So here, this is the big one. That's 2x. That means this is going to be the same. And this is going to be half. Right? So 87 divided by 2, UTV, UTV, that's what I'm looking for. So 87 divided by 2. So that's 43.5. So what about this one? D, E, F. D, E, F. I need this angle. Well, I know that these are linear pairs, so they should add up to 180. So if I do 180 minus 96, 180 minus 96, that's going to give me 84. This angle and this arc are the same, so that's 84, which means this one is 42. So we had to do a linear pair, and then the central angle, and then the inscribed angle. Are you guys still with me? I feel like I'm not getting any feedback. Is that because you can't understand? Okay, is this worth doing anymore? Is it worth me going over the IXLs? Yes. Yes? Okay, do you want me to keep going on U11 or do you want to skip over to a different one? Should we do a couple more here? Okay. I know some of you say you can hear me and some of them, some of you say I, you can't. I'm not sure how to help that. Let's do, like, I'll get this score up to 70%. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're good. Oh, am I good now? Okay, good. So I want to find the central angle. So 360 minus 98 minus 118 is going to give me 144. And then I want angle FGH, FGH, that's this angle, right? So if E is 144, then this arc is 144, and this is going to be half of that because the angle, the inscribed angle is smaller than the central angle by half. So 144 divided by 2 is going to be 72. I feel like it didn't give me any points there. S R T, S to R to T, that's this one. So I have to find the linear pair. Those are going to equal 180. So 180 minus 76 is going to give me 104. And then the central angle and the arc are going to be the same, 104. And this is going to be half. So 104 divided by 2 is going to give me 52. R, S, T, R to S to T. That's my question mark. That's going to be half. 
So 115 divided by 2 is going to give me 57.5. T, V, U, T to V to U. They keep asking me the small one, right? So we need to find the supplement. So 180 minus 112 gives me 68 because they're a linear pair. And then if that's 68, this is 68 and I want half of it. Do one more. RQS, RQS, still that interior angle. So I've got to find the central. They're going to add up to 360. So 360 minus 110. Central angle and the arc are the same. And this is half. Here I've got a central arc. So the relationship here is this divided by two equals the outside or the outside times two equals the inside. So again, I've got two equations here. This is small and this is big. So I can do the big one equals two times the small one or the big one divided by two equals the small one. Which equation looks easier to solve? Probably the top one. So x plus 95 equals 6x. Subtract my x from both sides to get the variables together. 95 equals 5x. And then 95 divided by 5, 95 divided by 5 equals 19. This is probably the hardest one you would see, but you definitely could see one like that. Gotcha. Yeah. I have one with like the triangles. Like, you know, when we used to, when we did the A, S, A, and then the A, S, S, or the A, S, A? Uh-huh. So how would I do it? Yeah, one of those. One like this one? So this is the one that's like a stage. I think of flashlights, or if you've ever played flashlight tag in the summertime, angle H is one flashlight, and it's shining on this angle that arc, right? And then I've got this flashlight from a different person shining on the exact same arc or part of the stage. That means these guys are going to be equal to each other. So 2x plus 41 equals x plus 50. Because both spotlights are shining on the same part of the stage, they're always going to be congruent. And it's just kind of hard to see. Normally, I would use a lot of highlighters and stuff, and we'd do this on paper, which makes it a little bit easier to see. It's just so hard digitally. So I want to subtract my X's over to the left side and then subtract my numbers over to the right side. So 50 minus 41 is 9. And I think X should equal nine. Let's check. Oh no. Oh, what did I do wrong? Such a rookie mistake. I got X equal nine, but that wasn't what it was asking me. It was asking me for angle H. So I had to put the nine in here. 2 times 9 plus 41. This is why everybody hates IXL. 2 times 9 plus, oops, 41 is 59 degrees. You've got to make sure you're answering the question being asked. Okay. All right. 
It is 8.35. I promise if you want, we'll talk about more of the IXLs tomorrow, but I do want to go back to our Pear Deck and the segments notes for today. So I'm going back to today's folder, Tuesday, January 12th. I know we still need to talk about the media album, but I do want to do this first. So hopefully you were able to get some good IXL points just now. In the chat, I'm going to put the link to that Pear Deck. You can always go to um, today's folder and get it. Did the link work? Do you see this? There we go. Okay, good. All right. So we have some words that we know, but they're brand new. So a secant seeks the outside. It goes to the outside. A tangent touches in exactly one spot, right? And then a chord connects edges. And there's four relationships that we need to know about these, okay? So the four relationships are on the next slide. You can have intersecting chords where they kind of make an X. You can have one where you've got two tangents that touch the edge. And this kind of looks like an ice cream cone to me. So I talk about this one being an ice cream cone. So you've got the ice cream cone and you've got the X. And then you've got one where you've got four pieces and you've got a point outside the circle. So these are two intersecting secants. Two, four parts and outside the circle. And then you've got a modification of this one where you've got one outside and another outside and one inside and the vertex is outside the circle, right? So most of these, the vertex is outside the circle except when it makes an X. So we're gonna start with number one and then go to number two, number three and number four. And you're gonna see how this works and then we'll practice it more tomorrow, okay? So first the ice cream cone ones, because I think these are definitely the easiest. When you have an ice cream cone, the right side and the left side are exactly the same, right? The right side and the left side are exactly the same. So that's all we're saying here. The left side and the right side are exactly the same. So AB is congruent to BC. So you can put those little congruent marks on your notes. And then I want you to go up to this picture here in the upper left hand side next to the ice cream cones and put some congruent marks there. So AQ is congruent to AR. And then you can get another color. RB is congruent to BS. And SC is congruent to QC. This is a circle inscribed in a triangle. Remember we had that word inscribed earlier where we had a hexagon inscribed in a circle? Here we've got it the other way around. The circle is inscribed in the triangle and it makes kind of an ice cream cone. So let's look down at the pink circle. If I know that this top side is 80, then I know this bottom side is 80. And if I know the whole thing is 119, what's this little piece up here? How can you find that? Can you do 119 minus 80? And you get 39. So if I know the left side is 39, what's the right side? I know you're thinking to yourself, it's also 39. I'm just afraid to say it. You're 100% correct. It is 39. 
So if I've got 80 and 80 in the lower left and 39 and 39 on the top, then we can go to the bottom. If that whole bottom piece of the triangle is 202 and the left side is 80, can I do 202 minus 80 equals the right side? Anybody do that in the calculator? Did you get 122? So if the right ice cream cone, this is like one big ball of ice cream with three ice cream cones stuck to it. If that bottom right piece is 122, what's the top right piece? Also 122, right? So we've got three ice cream cones on top of that one ball of ice cream and all three ice cream cones, the sides are the same because ice cream cones are congruent. So you know it's not always going to be that easy. Sometimes they'll ask you the perimeter. If they ask you the perimeter, you just add up all those sides. So 39 times 2 plus 122 times 2 plus 80 times 2. So 39 plus 39 plus 122 plus 122 plus 80 plus 80 equals 480. Two. So the perimeter of this triangle is 482. Sometimes you'll be asked the perimeter. So what do you think we should do with um, segments A, B, and A, C over here in circle O? What should we do with those two expressions? Should we set them equal to each other? X squared plus eight equals 33. How do I solve that equation? Can I subtract eight from both sides? Yeah. So what is 33 minus eight? Should be a perfect square. So x equals 5. Okay. Two tangents touching a circle make an ice cream cone. It's all symmetrical. Usually in circle questions, if it looks symmetrical, it is symmetrical. I know I've told you all semester, don't assume anything in geometry. But for the most part, if it looks symmetrical, only when you're talking about a circle, it's going to be symmetrical. Hopefully you think these are easy. I feel so guilty about trying to stuff all this information in your brains at this hour of the morning without any visual contact. So hard to read the room. Usually I'm so good at that. We ready to go to slide five? We'll try to do slide five and then we'll be done for the day because I see that it's 844. Okay. This one too is pretty easy. I've got A, B, they're together. So I multiply those two numbers. And then I've got C, D, they're together on one chord. So I multiply those two numbers. That's all there is to it. So what numbers would I multiply in this first problem down here? If you said 10 times X to yourself, you would be 100% correct. And then what would I multiply for the pink uh, chord? Again, if you said 14 times 15, you'd be 100% correct. So if I solve that, 10 X equals, I gotta grab my calculator, 14 times 15 is 210. Then we're gonna divide by 10 and X equals 21. Okay. C 
Same thing in the second example. You just have to do some a little extra algebra. So we're going to have one chord that's pink, and we're going to do 27 times x plus 5. And then we're going to have this other chord that's blue or purple, and we're going to do 24 times x plus 7. I know there's not a whole lot of room. Hopefully when you're typing, it'll be easier. We've got to do the distributive property. So when you've got a coefficient or a constant outside of parentheses, you've got to multiply. So 27x plus, and then I've got to do 27 times 5 in my calculator, and I get 135. And then same thing over here, 24x and 24 times 7. 168. That's an X, by the way. 168. I always subtract my smaller variables. So I'm going to subtract 24X. And you get 3X. If I move my variables to the left, I want to move my numbers to the right. Minus 135. So those guys cross out. My equal sign comes down. And 168 minus 135 gives me 33. So x equals 11. Okay. We're going to put a pin in that and we'll come back and we'll review these two and finish the last two tomorrow. But in the last couple of minutes of class, before you leave me, I do want to show you the media albums on Friday. So this was the homework for yesterday. If you've done it, I'm so impressed. Good job. Yeah. Is it okay if I do the last one today? Just it? Yeah. So in these media albums, what I need you to do is go find a question that involves circumference and area. So I made my own and took a picture with my camera and then saved it and uploaded it. Lots of people just screen captured, right? Once you add a question, you need to go back and answer somebody else's question. Okay, so you've got one media album for circumference and surface area or circumference and area. You've got another for equations of the circle. So add your picture of equations of a circle and then go at go answer one. You can answer one by just adding a comment. Same thing with arc length and sector area. You want to do one or the other. It doesn't need to be both. Add your picture. I made mine on a paper plate, took a picture with my phone and then um, uploaded it. But other people just screen captured. And then the last one is what we were talking about today, those central and inscribed angles. You can even take a picture of IXL as you're doing it and put the IXL questions in here. That is perfectly okay with me. Especially if you're doing IXL and you get to the one, one of the ones like Nasia said today, hey, Ms. Doherty, I don't know how to do this. You get stuck on IXL, take a picture of that and put it up here and then we'll talk about it tomorrow, okay? Don't forget about the homework for tonight, though. There is homework for tonight. This was a lot. This was yesterday's homework. So tonight's homework should be over here in your toolbar on the side. Maybe mine will load. There's also a boot camp today. The boot camp today is logic. So circle segments practice. This is what I want you to do tonight. It's going to be due tomorrow. Okay. That is class for the day. You guys did great. I'm so impressed. Keep it up and I'll see you tomorrow.